This is a special plasticky bubble mix that makes really long-lasting bubbles. Brand name of it is Capture Bubble, but I'm not going to blow any bubbles with it. I'm just going to hold it near to the Vandegraaff. This little bit of tin foil is going to levitate and fly around for us. So the belt that carries the charge, this is made of rubber from a gym ball. It seems to be a very good rubber for the job. Also means you can make a seamless belt by running around the whole circumference of the ball. At least it's seamless until it breaks, after which it does glue very easily. Here's the lower roller assembly with the charge carrying belt taken off. Lower roller is made of nylon, just a nylon cylinder that I bought. You can see the brush that sprays charge onto the belt and that is made of wire wool. doesn't matter much what you use but wire wool is soft so it won't damage the belt if the belt ruckles up and brushes against it. What's more important though, is that you can adjust the height of this and you can just tweak it to get, get it into close proximity to the surface of the belt. So that adjusts there. Now because getting the belt to run smoothly, or as smoothly as possible, is very important and also because adding tension to it can help with performance I've made my bottom axle adjustable, so that can help you counter any tendency of the belt to, to wander off to one side or the other, and it can ensure that your machine is compatible with slightly different lengths of belt, so I can move, I can move the two ends of my bottom axle up and down here using these wing nuts. Here's the assembly at the top of the belt. Now the top roller is drain pipe covered with silicon rubber. 
an excellent material to use, hard to get hold of though, so you might make do with Teflon or just PVC, should work fine. The top brushes that collect the charge, again wire wool. Now everything, and this is a good general strategy, everything can be adjusted, everything can be removed for repair or replacement. So the roller itself too, that will pop out if I ever want to meddle with it. The whole thing is powered by a motor which came from a vacuum cleaner, I think, which is in there. But it's had to be slowed down a lot, so there's a dimmer switch here controlling it. And that drives the bottom axle via this belt here. Now this is where all the charges end up, of course. Like many people, I've used some bowls that they sell at IKEA to make these. So they're, they're taped together down the middle. Of course you do have to figure out how you're going to make a hole to accept the support column. But you can just use any old bit of wire to connect this to your upper brush. And fit it over the top. And mine just sits on a ring of hose pipe here. Now as well as supporting it, that shields the sharp edges of metal where it's cut and stops those from spewing charge into the air. It just gives it a nice round finish. One thing I found out, which is useful to know, it just takes one tiny bit of hair or thread or fluff sticking around the dome of your machine to really reduce the length of sparks you're getting and the overall effectiveness. So have a duster around, keep it clean. If you want to identify the places where charge is being shed, put the lights off and if there's a particular culprit that's doing it, you should see the glow as it ejects charge into the air. So you can find it and get rid of it. Here's what I use to collect sparks without getting zapped myself. It's just another serving bowl, not quite as fancy as the IKEA ones. You should also keep this one clean and avoid any sharp bits sticking out because again they'll facilitate a, a, a transfer of a gradual transfer of charge which you don't want. And even in the room around you want to watch out for sharp metal points which will act to discharge the voltage from your dome.